Welcome to another physics video. In this video, we'll be explaining centrifugal force and centripetal force. And hopefully, after this video, we can understand both of them and their differences. And also, we'll give some examples uh, where they occur. And an example that we'll be using to explain is this Ferris wheel, as you can see here. So first of all, I'm going to explain centripetal force because I feel it's important to understand centripetal force first before you understand centrifugal force. So what is centripetal force? Centripetal force is the force that acts on a body in a uniform circular motion, and it acts towards the center of the surface. So let me get this. This is the center of this, of this motion. Now the centrifugal, the centripetal force is acting towards the center. It's acting toward the center. And because of that force, that is why this particular body is moving in a circle. So if not for the centripetal force, this body won't be able to move in a circle. So because of centripetal force, the velocity of the, of the object changes direction. So instead of moving straight, it changes. And that's why in a uniform circular motion, the velocity changes, but then the speed remains the same because of centripetal force. So centripetal force is what keeps the body in a uniform circular motion, and it acts towards the center of the circle of motion. Now for centrifugal force, centrifugal force is a little different because centrifugal force is not an actual force, it's an apparent force, and it's apparent because it's a it's as a result of the inertia that's acting on this body. So if this body is moving in a straight motion and it changes because of the centripetal force, because of the inertia of the body, it has a, there is an apparent feeling of outward force that acts in opposite direction to the centripetal force. And that force is the centripetal force. So by definition, a centripetal force is an apparent force that acts with equal magnitude and opposite direction to the centripetal force. And it is as a result of the inertia of the body and the apparent change in its direction. And examples, as you can see here, is in this Ferris wheel. That's why, so at the top of this Ferris wheel, this body, the, the person is gonna feel lighter because now the centripetal force is acting in opposite direction to the centripetal force. And at this point, the centripetal force is basically the gravitational pull. So at this point, this person will feel lighter because of that apparent force. At this point, the person will feel heavier because the centripetal force is now acting in the same direction as centripetal force. Or no, as the gravitational force. It's still acting opposite to centripetal force, but now in the same direction as gravitational force. So the person will feel heavier at this point. Now for the centripetal force is the same. This is, an, is a good example. And we have to remember that the centripetal force acts towards the center of the circle and the centripetal force acts in opposite direction to the center, to the centripetal force. Another good example of centripetal force is the, 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 the force of gravity that keeps the planets rotating about the sun and in a constant motion. So the centripetal force is what makes those planets to keep orbiting in, or to keep moving in a particular orbit. And another, a good example of a centrifugal force is an example of a car moving in a, in a, in a road that is circular. So if the car is going round, the, the centrifugal force acts on maybe the driver and there's, a, there's, a, there's an outward feeling. It always acts outwardly. There's an outward feeling that acts in opposite direction to the center of the circle. But that outward force, apparent force, is equal in magnitude, but opposite direction to the centripetal force. And the centrifugal force is, the centripetal force is the mean using the mass of the object and the speed, of the, I mean the velocity of the object as it's moving, and also the radius of the circle. This is how we determine the magnitude of the centripetal force and the centrifugal force.